Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today we are doing the big fight, the carnage, the shootout between Affinity Photo, Lightroom Classic, Lumina 4 and Nick Collection, including Photolab, because that is part of the bundle. And if you think I'm a dummy for comparing these programs, well, write it in the comment if you think I'm an idiot, but I will do it anyways. Also, before we get started, check out my new video on my second channel where I talk about the future of photography. I have amazing drone shots for you and I tell you the 10 most important things you should know before you buy your own photo and video drone. So let's start with file organization. And of course, here we have to disqualify Affinity Photo because you can't organize files at all with it. But that might not be a downside because you can always get an organizing tool beside your editing software. And if you have more multimedia formats like sound and video and vectors and mockups and all these kind of different things, you might need to have a more advanced organization tool anyways. Let's get started with Luminar. You can do ratings with stars, you can do little hearts, and then you can also do albums, stuff like that. But it is a pretty basic kind of organization. A good thing you can do, of course, is you can upload to just SmugMug and 500 pics. Luminar can organize files, but it's not the master of it. But what it can do is to edit individual single files without the need to import them into an organizing scheme like an archive, stuff like that. So that's pretty sweet. Let's go over to Lightroom. And of course, well, what can I say? Lightroom pretty much is the master of organizing your photos because it has a ton of different functionalities in there. Not only the star ratings and stuff like that, but you have keywords, you have GPS data, which you can also see on the Google map right there to see where you took your picture. So if you want to find them on the location, you can. It also has face detection. You can make quick collections, which means that you can also compare and combine pictures no matter where they are. So that's pretty, pretty sweet. And another thing you can do with that is inside of Lightroom, you can also create presentations, slideshows, books, web pages, videos. You can even upload directly to Adobe Stock. Now, you might not be a fan of Adobe Stock, but if you want to make some money with your pictures and you plan to upload thousands of pictures, think about the work to individually give them a title and give them text and all that kind of stuff. Well, if you can upload it through Lightroom, all that is already included and the pictures just land on Adobe Stock, which is very, very sweet. So that's a super good function if you're a stock photographer. Now let's go over to Nick Collection and Photo Lab, which again is a bit basic in what you can do with organizing your pictures. The newest version like Photo Lab 3 has keywords for star ratings. You can recheck them and flag them and stuff like that. So that's pretty nice to have. But the big benefit here is it doesn't have or need an archive. It just uses your folders structure so there is no import time you can just like snappy edit it and even do individual pictures without needing to import them anywhere it's just the folders you open them you have the pictures boom and you go so that is very nice to have and makes it super quick to work with that let's go to the next category which is editing and of course what can i say a Day photo probably takes the crown here because you can do everything with affinity photo you have effects you have adjustments you have live effects you have layers you can do a ton of different things you even have vectors and masks and shapes and there is so many things you can do with that it's basically the swiss army knife of photo editing you can do compositions and also 3d paintings a lot of text effects 3d lightings and digital lighting and all these kind of stuff affinity photo can do that so for editing in a very complex in-depth way probably affinity photo is the best tool for that now you might not want to have such an advanced feature and to be honest if you open affinity photo for the first time it can be a bit intimidating and if you don't know how to do what and how to get which results through editing you might be a little bit out of your water. It might be too complex for you. Now, if we talk about Luminar, it's like mm, the sweetest tool for beginners because it is very easy to adjust. Every lever has a very nice description that makes you understand what it's doing. But 
The most amazing thing for editing in Luminar is that it has AI support and that AI support helps you to do things like sky replacement. It knows where the face is so you can make just the face brighter you can make just the eyes whiter you can adjust the teeth and the lip color stuff like that you don't have to mask anything because the software understands which parts of the face are what and you just have to move the lever so it is really amazing for beginners. You can get really quick and awesome looking results and you can also get very nice and tasty colors with it, but it's also easy to over edit. So be careful with that. And another thing I have to say is with all this powerful AI stuff and all the cool things you can do, still the editing is a little bit on the shallow side. So. I would say that Luminar is really good for beginners and even medium photographers, medium level photographers. You can do really amazing things and it's very quick and snappy, um, but it isn't as in-depth. Let's go over to Lightroom, which is a really amazing tool and it is nice for beginners and professionals alike. At the same time, it is kind of specialized and very limited in what you can actually do with it because Lightroom is specialized on adjusting images, but that's it. So if you think about sky replacement or to do any other things or you want to place objects or text or other thing in your photos in a more advanced way with 3D lighting and shadows on the text and kind of other cool effects, Lightroom can't do that at all. But at the same time, for the things it does, if you want to have really tasty colors, if you want to have a really nice look of just adjusting your pictures, Lightroom has the functions and it is built up in a way that you find the tools and the organization of the tools to make it really quick and easy to adjust these pictures and give you a very nice and smooth workflow to work with that. Let's go to Nick Collection and let me tell you this. If you want to have really, really tasty colors and images, you like the vintage analog look, you like this kind of organic feel in your pictures, whew, there is nothing better than Nick Collection because it can do that. But it is a very specialized, it is a very precise tool. This is also why it is split up in itself into different tools, like for example, analog effects or color effects or silver effects pro or Viveza, which have specialized functions in what you want to do. At the same time, this makes the editing of the pictures more precise, but also slower because you have to jump through these different tools. You can't use them at the same time. So this is a little bit of a problem. If you want to have quick and snappy results, Nick Collection is not your friend, but if you want to fiddle with the pictures, get really amazing looks in there, Nick Collection is the tool of choice. Now, again, Nick Collection is more for adjusting the pictures. You can add artistic effects like grunge maps and light leaks and uh, film looks and stuff like that to the pictures and frames around the picture stuff like that can be done in Nick Collection, but you can't replace a sky and you can't add like a balloon that uh, the child is holding stuff like that is not possible in Nick Collection. Now let's go to the next point, which is raw editing. That's a class of its own. And let's start again with Affinity Photo. It can edit raw. It even has something called a developer persona that is specialized for raw editing. The thing is, it's still very basic in the ways it can edit raw. But you have to think about that this is just for basic adjustments and then you switch over to the photo persona and there you have all the different functions that you can have with the effects, with the adjustments, with the LUTs, with the presets, with the macros. So while the raw editing on its own in Affinity is very basic, what you can do after you did these basic raw adjustments is mind blowing and amazing. So you can do really in depth editing, which you cannot do with any of the other tools. So at the same time, basic, but advanced, it's kind of hard to, well, categorize it. Let's go to Luminar, which is again, quick and snappy and can get you really cool results even with raw pictures. But at the same time, it is beginner level software, which 
makes amazing pictures but isn't in-depth editing so it has the upside of being super easy it has the downside of being not that professional if you need really professional tools if we talk about Lightroom, of course, here we have pretty advanced tools, but like I said before, limited to adjusting the picture with the colors, with the shadows, with the lighting, stuff like that, but not much more. So if you only want to adjust your raw picture to look really amazing, but don't have any other kind of effects in there, Lightroom is pretty cool for that. And of course, if you take the photos in the same place, you have the benefit that then you can sync the edit to the other pictures and just transfer it so you can edit 50 pictures at the same time, basically. If we talk about Nick Collection, Photolab has a really satisfying and nice way to edit raw pictures even with more advanced features than Lightroom, because it has something like digital lighting. It is also very, very good with noise reduction. So Photolab is pretty cool to adjust your raw pictures. And then we even go into Nick Collection, where we have all these other amazing tools where you can adjust the pictures, get that vintage look, get these tasty colors, really, really nice. So. This is really good. And another thing that you have to point out here, didn't say that before, is that Nick Collection will do between each edit a TIFF copy of that. So it will create, even from a JPEG, will create a TIFF version of the picture. And then you edit it, for example, in analog effects. You save that out into that TIFF version and then you open it up. And then if you open it up in Viveza, this will create another TIFF copy just for this Viveza edit. So each editing step actually creates a new copy of the file, which of course will fill up your hard drive. You should delete the other edits, but you have the safety that the original file stays untouched, although the process itself is not non-destructive is actually destructive but in a copy of the file let's talk about the next point here which is pretty important and that is the workflow and the native environment now affinity photo gives you a lot of tools at your hand to make your workflow very smooth and easy you can have file templates you can have presets for the canvas size resolution and print setup you can use LUTs and macros and adjustment presets. So there's a lot of things that can make your workflow a lot faster. You have a specific export persona, which helps you with a lot of export formats. Then you have the normal export dialog, which gives you a lot of file choices. And what you also have is batch editing, which can make it really fast if you want to have a batch of photos, like 100 photos edited in a certain way or converted to another file format. So Affinity Photo has a lot of good features to make the workflow very smooth. On the native environment side, Affinity Photo has two sister programs which are very nicely integrated. One is Affinity Designer, which is an illustration and vector program. And then we have Affinity Publisher, which is specialized in print and screen publishing. So if you want to do a printed book or an ebook or a brochure, stuff like that, publishers really nice for that. And the files interact very well between Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. So you can use all of these files together in the different softwares. So that is very, very nice. If you look at Luminar, the workflow is very quick and snappy to get really nice looking results, especially with the AI support. So the workflow is really on point in Luminar. On the environment side, there isn't really a native environment to speak of. So Luminar is basically on its own with not much software around that, that it can help you to do more things from the same company. If we talk about Lightroom, well, the workflow is very nice, very quick. If you have learned the tools a little bit and you get very quickly into them, you can get very fast results and you can get that famous tasty Lightroom look into your pictures. Also with the upload function to Adobe Stock and other pages, this is a very nice workflow. If we talk about the native environment, the integration into other software, of course, Lightroom simply is the king because Adobe has so many different software tools surrounding it, like 
Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere, Dreamweaver, all these kind of different tools where you can publish your results on all kinds of different devices and platforms, be it a website or a video or even a 3D graphic or whatever you want to do with that. Adobe probably has a solution and they even have mobile apps that also integrate like Lightroom Mobile, uh, Photoshop Mobile and other creative tools that you can use on your phone, on your iPad, on your Android device. So there is a lot of integration in there. So environment wise, there is probably nothing that is better integrated into a native environment than Lightroom. If we look at Nick Collection, the workflow is a bit slow but it is very in-depth and the tools work very good with each other because they are made to complete each other and you can do really precise, amazing edits and get very nice and tasty looks into it. At the same time, because it is split up into these different functionalities, it makes the workflow a lot slower and also it is a destructive workflow. So when you have done an edit, and then you want to change something you can't go back. So for that reason, the workflow is not the easiest and not the fastest. So I'm, it's not a workflow tool, let's say it like that. If we talk about the native environment, Nick Collection and Photolab are basically their own environment. First of all, like I said, because Nick Collection is split up into these different tools and also Photolab integrates very well with Nick Collection. They are made for each other. They are made to complete each other. You can also buy some extra additions for Photolab, like different and film looks, but there isn't a bigger native environment around that. Let's talk about the export functions here. Now, I would say Affinity Photo probably has the most complex and rich export environment, not only because it allows you to export in a big variety of file formats and gives you a lot of options inside of these export dialogues, but also because it has a specialized export persona that, for example, allows you to slice images into different chunks, into different areas, and then automatically batch export these slices, not just in a row of different slices you want to have, but also in different file formats for these slices. So you can work really quickly and very, very versatile with the kind of exporting you want to do for your files. Also be it web ready, be it print ready, stuff like that can be done with Affinity Photo. If you look at the export abilities of Luminar, it is kind of basic, like what you would expect from the basic file types and from the basic adjustment, but nothing fancy and nothing more than that. Now Lightroom for export has some pretty cool functions. If you just want to export a picture, the functions are kind of limited, kind of basic. But on top of that, what Lightroom can do is to create a slideshow or a video of that slideshow, a presentation, a book. It even can create a website for you, including the HTML codes. You just have to put that on your web space. Now, the web function is very basic. It doesn't look that amazing, but it is there. You can do it if you need a quick online presentation with your pictures. You could use Lightroom to create a little website for that. If we talk about Nick Collection, again, the export functionality is kind of basic. Just the things you would expect from exporting a picture, but nothing fancy, nothing special. If we want to talk about the biggest features that make these software tools stand apart of each other, of course, Affinity Photo is the Swiss army knife that can do everything from adjustment to editing to complex composites to even digital painting and a lot of other things. So if you want to do it all, Affinity Photo can be your friend and also is very affordable. With Luminar, of course, it is the AI functionality, the ease of use, the quickness of getting results and the beginner friendliness. So you jump in and in five minutes, you already have your first amazing picture that you can put online and people will be amazed by how you edited the picture. So ease of use and snappy results, that is Luminar. 
Lightroom, of course, is famous for that tasty Lightroom look that you know from a lot of pages. It is a professional tool that's well integrated with a huge, huge environment and it makes it very easy to sync the edits to other pictures. So if you need a quick and professional workflow, Lightroom can do that for you. And then we have Nick Collection. I have to say it's my personal favorite of getting really, really tasty photos and really nice edits. I love the organic, warm, analog look that you can make with that. I love the cool colors and the really, I can't express it otherwise, the tastiness you can get out of these pictures. That is Nick Collection. So if you are into that, if you love to fiddle around, if you want to have very specialized tools to adjust your images, Nick Collection is really, really good for that. Last but not least, let's answer the question, which kind of software should you get? Now, I would say if you're a beginner and or if you are on a budget, Luminar and Affinity Photo are a great combination with each other. Luminar will help you to organize your files, has this AI support, is very easy to get into, while Affinity Photo helps you with the more complex things, with the more advanced edits. You can grow with it for many years and at at the same time, it's still a beginner friendly software and of course affordable. If you do stock photography, product photography, weddings, parties, stuff like that, I would suggest you get a combination of Lightroom and Photoshop because first of all, it will give you these professional results very quick and easy, but at the same time, and this is more important, you can integrate in a bigger environment and have the file formats that your customers expect. This is really important because if you want to work with advertisement agencies or design agencies or stuff like that, they will need to have Adobe files because they are all working with Adobe. So you're basically locked into that. If you're into amazing styles of pictures, this analog worthiness, this kind of just tastiness of pictures, well, you know what I'm going to say, get Nick collection with photo lab. You might be set with that. If you want to be a little bit more advanced, get Affinity Photo on top of that because you can do, like I said, everything with that. It's the Swiss Army knife. So a combination of Nick Collection, Photo Lab and Affinity Photo will give you basically everything you need to do this amazing, tasty, just sweet looking content. If on the other hand, you want to do complex edits on a budget, photo bashing, composites, digital painting, design, all these kind of cool things, I would say get Affinity Photo because you can do all of that on a very small budget. Sometimes they even have sales where you get it 50% off. So you pay like 30 bucks for a software that will enable you to do amazing things for the next years. So that is a pretty good investment for really complex works. And of course, if you want to have it quick and sexy, you just want to have amazing pictures with ease that makes your friends jaws drop, I would say get Luminar because first of all, it helps you organize your files in an easy way. And secondly, with the AI support, it will enable you to do amazing edits without having the professional knowledge on really knowing what is going on, but the results are there and that's what counts. Okay, that's it, friends. I really hope you enjoyed this comparison of the software tools. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you agree or maybe also disagree, but be nice to each other. And well, if you want to see more of me, maybe subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you get notified when I upload something and have a good day, have a good night, have a sweet edit of your pictures with these cool tools. See you soon. Bye. Ah. If you want to talk about full heads. Mm. Uh, all right. Now, I would say nine. Let's, um, I guess nine. Um, uh, mm. in. Mm. Um, these facts. If, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, Any collection? Good. Um.